Hello, uh, my name is uh, Neil Westwood and uh, this is my wife uh, Laura. Today we are seeking a £100,000 investment for 15% of Magic Whiteboard. Magic Whiteboard allows you to create a portable whiteboard from a roll anywhere in seconds. Each roll contains 25 perforated sheets. It's 20 metres in length and you can see it sticks to any hard, flat surface without the need for uh, tape, tack or glue. You write on it like a traditional whiteboard and it erases in exactly uh, the same way. Plain paper also sticks to it without the need for tape or tack. You can see it sticks to glass as well. We have secured the sole and exclusive distribution and selling rights to Magic Whiteboard in the UK and Ireland. We also have the option of expanding that to other worldwide territories subject to negotiation. We've been trading now successfully uh, for two years. This year we expect uh, to have a turnover of £150,000. In year three, our turnover will be three million pounds, which will be a profit of 1.4 million. Neil and Laura Westwood have made bold claims about the future profits and potential global market for the innovative portable whiteboard for which they've secured exclusive distribution rights. You make a great secretary, Deborah. <laughs> Read that, Duncan. Thank you, Duncan. <laughs> To scale up their business, they need £100,000 of investment in exchange for 15% equity. But something seems to be bothering Peter Jones. Laura, Neil, um, my first look at this, this is, this is almost ridiculous. Why would I use this? Well, if you're uh, a trainer, if you do any uh, group work... Well, I have uh, a whiteboard. But if, if you're a, like a consultant, for example, doing any training... Well, I'm going to go and carry that around in my briefcase. Well, yeah, we, for we example, in my job, I haven't always been to the venue that I'm going to train in before I get there, so yeah. I don't know what facilities are going to be there. All I now need to carry is that. So you... Whereas before, I might have taken a big flip chart stand, I might have taken a big flip chart pad. So uh, all I need is that. So you've put that up on the wall and you're right notes on it. It stick to anything. It just feels ridiculous. Can I borrow your pen? It's an unusual but unambiguous out from Peter Jones and a massive blow for the couple. Thank you. Theo Pafitis made his millions running stationary chains. Now he wants to know why, if it's such a good idea, he's never heard of it. Why haven't you been breaking down my buyer's doors? The main reason is because we've got other jobs, but we've waited for this opportunity, really, to speak, you know, to your expertise, direct. Tell uh, us about the job. Well, I work for the chief executive of a hospital in Worcestershire. And what did Laura do? I'm a commissioning officer for the local authority. Assuming that uh, I gave you £100,000, yeah. um, what are you going to do with it? We want to invest in a sales team. Sales team, OK. Yeah. You're yes. going to employ a salesman. That's it. Uh, but <laughs> we need a salesman, but obviously if that salesman and ourselves, we're not going to stop doing it, generates sales, we need to have um, everything in place to be able to cope with the increased orders that we're going to get. Because at the moment, the orders come in, and I, I am the distribution network at the moment, so I go every day to the post office and take the rolls. <laughs> Neil and Laura's homegrown business may be big enough for the two of them, but is it big enough for a dragon? Duncan Bannatyne wants to get down to figures. How many of these are you selling on average in a week? How many of these are you walking to the post office with and sticking in the post office? Uh, 50 um, a week. But we're, we've, we've, we've just had uh, um, you know, a big order to Norway and we've just How had to 472 rolls. So just, they're paying? Just over a pallet. How are they paying? They've paid in cash. What does it cost you for one of those? It costs us £7 a roll. What do you sell them for? Um, we sell them for £29.99 retail. I like it. 
I like the business now, I like the point of view. What, what I'm concerned about is that the market isn't big enough to make this a business that could take an investment and give the investor a return at some time. I'm worried that the total market's too small. That's my only concern. We estimate this market's are worth uh, about probably £100 um, million. Pounds. The product itself is uh, currently uh, selling over 200,000 uh, rolls in um, Japan. Japan currently buy 200,000 rolls a year? Yes. People use it in nurseries for drawing on. People are using it to block out windows in, in some flats in you know, bathrooms and things like that. We, we didn't anticipate that market, but people are buying it for that purpose. It's beginning to sound quite interesting. The magic whiteboard success in an early adopters market like Japan has whetted the dragon's appetite for its potential elsewhere. Now, Deborah Meaden wants to interrogate the self-effacing couple on the business deal they have with the inventor. Your exclusivity agreement yeah. is on that product full stop yes. or on that product used as a whiteboard? No, the, the product full stop. So you could sell you it could for... could use it for anything. What is exclusive about this product? Right, well, it, it's statically charged polypropylene. The polypropylene is... And the... is, it pro is it protected? It is, is he the only person, whoever you're getting this from, are they the only person yeah. who can there's produce a, this? There's a granted European patent on the product. Neil, I'm going to make you an offer. Because I like the two of you, I'm going to offer you £50,000. That's half the money you've asked for, for 20% of the company. Quiet the couple may be, but Duncan Bannatyne is the first to recognise they may also be astute entrepreneurs. But under DEN rules, unless they can convince another dragon to put up the remaining 50%, they still walk away with nothing. Deborah Meaden has now made up her mind. I actually think it's, it's a neat idea. So I am going to make you an offer. OK. And it'll be for £50,000 for 20% of the business. No, I'll tell you what I'll do, because there's a couple of other dragons in, I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to put £25,000 in for 10%. OK. With a full offer on the table between Deborah Meaden and Duncan Bannatyne, James Kahn seems to be trying to initiate a four-way split on a deal, perhaps in the hope of reeling in the influential stationary magnate Theopaphetis, who's now ready to have his say. It's all right, they're making you offers. But I'm the only one that can make this an instant overnight success. Are you able to assure me today that there is nobody else worldwide manufacturing a similar product for that use? Yes. Right. On that condition, I too will make you an offer for the whole sum of a hundred thousand pounds for forty percent. Theo, I don't know whether you consider me as a partner. There is some added benefits having Deborah as part of the team. I've worked with Deborah before. So I'm going to say to you, if I go down to 20% for 50,000 and Deborah has the other 20% for 50,000, I think you have got a fantastic result in getting both of us. Theo Pafitis has ignored his rivals to his right and agreed to another potential partnership with Deborah Meaden. But the Dragons are demanding a massive 40% stake of the business Neil and Laura have built up from scratch. Will they think it's worth the sacrifice? Well, I've, I think we've made a decision and we'd like to accept um, your offer.
Well done, Deborah. Yep, well done. Right. Well, done. well done. Well done. Neil and Laura have done it. Not only do they have the money they wanted, but they've teamed up with an influential stationery retailer in Theopophytis and an expert marketer in Deborah Meaden. Laura, Neil, I think you should be pretty pleased with that outcome, shouldn't you? Yeah, we're really pleased. Yeah, we're absolutely delighted that we've both got the expertise of Theo and Deborah. So when you came in, did you think we need Theo for this product? It all hinges on Theo. We did initially, because we obviously want the distribution network and he's got that already in place. We'll see how you get on. Yeah, thank you. Thank well you. Done.